What have a seat right here? In that blue chair? That blue chair right there. The lady's here to come talk to you. Gonna be cool? Yes, sir. Okay, man. All right. This is 30-year-old Al Mutahan McLean. On December 13th, 2019, McLean called 911, claiming his son, 10-year-old Dakota Collins, wasn't breathing. Operators gave McLean instructions on how to perform CPR, but he was unable to get the boy breathing again. Paramedics arrived to find Dakota completely unresponsive and transported him to a local hospital where he was later pronounced dead. Initial examination of the body showed obvious signs of abuse, so McLean was arrested and brought in for questioning. What's going on? I'm Detective Sloss. Detective Sloss is going to be coming in in a minute, too. Here we go. Okay. So, have you ever been ready to race before? Mm, yeah. You have? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, spell your first name for me. A L M U T A H A N. M E T A H A N? No. no. A L M U T A H A N. Can I please have some water? I ain't had water in six, seven hours, please. Yes. We will get you water in one minute. Somebody can probably grab yeah. it. Okay. Okay, today is December 13th, 2019. Can I take a pass off? Just no, no. brought you some water. Can I get a photo on my lip? We'll, we'll take care of it. Just drink it like you drink some water. Open. Okay. Hey, let us know if you guys want to cuss off. I'm only pouring a little bit because I'm trying not to choke you. I don't want to. Just trying. Hey, I'm all right. All right. Okay. So, A L M U T A H A N. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Okay. What's your last name? Uh, McLean. How do you spell? M C L E A N. Okay, what's your date of birth? 4189. And your SOJ? Perfect, okay. So, yeah, it's December 13th, 2019. It is currently 9.36 at night. Yeah. And we are at 335 West 3rd Street, which is our safety building. Okay? We are going to be interviewing you in regards to the crime of a homicide. Okay? Homicide, that's like premeditated. Hmm. Homicide's kind of a catch all for somebody that died more than likely not of natural causes. Make sense? Yeah. So it kind of covers a lot of things. It could but be murder, it, it could be. That's the thing. I don't know. I don't even know why my child is dead. You know I, mean? I, I still don't know. If your child's dead? No, they just told me he did, but they didn't tell me what killed him or anything like that. You know hear I me? Mean? what this opportunity is for is for you to yeah, tell us to discuss it with we you because right you were there we weren't right so, so that's this is once we go through your rights this is your opportunity to kind of tell us what happened today and okay. what how he died how he became unresponsive because we weren't there right right okay so let her get through this portion of it with you real quick okay mr mcclain i'm going to have you read number one out loud for me i had a right to remain silence do not have to make any statements or answer any questions, anything I can't say will no, just be that's fine. Okay, you have the right to remain silent. You do not have to make any statements or answer any questions. You understand? Yes, I waive my rights. Okay. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, ma'am. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and to have a lawyer with you during questioning. Do you understand? Yeah. If you do not have the money to hire a lawyer, a lawyer appointed by the court or a lawyer from the public defender's office will be provided to you before and during questioning without any cost to you. Do you understand? Yes? No. Okay. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to a lawyer. Right. Okay? 
And you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, waiver of rights. The above statement of rights is alleged to me. I understand what my rights are. I am willing to make a statement and answer questions. I do not want a lawyer at this time. I understand and know what I am doing. No promises or threats have been made to me, and no pressure or coercion of any kind has been used against me. Okay, you know, I don't want to agree to that right now. That man just bought me in my shit and told me I did it. So I don't, I feel that was uh, pressure right there. I wanted to speak immediately. You what? I said, I just, yeah, I feel like he pressured me. Okay. But are you wanting to talk to us now? Do you yes. have that right? Yes, I do. Okay, I but is know. that by choice? Because yes, I want to know what's going on. I want to know what happened to my child. Okay, we want to know too. How many years of schooling did you complete? Probably eight. Okay. Okay, and you understand this, right? Mm -hmm. And you're willing to talk to us? Mm -hmm. And you understand you could stop at any time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and that's just saying that I haven't threatened you, I haven't made you any promises, I haven't, none of that. You're talking of your own free will, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We want you to tell us, because we weren't there, what happened today. The detective simply asks, what happened today? An intentionally open-ended question. McLean then tells detectives about Dakota's typical behavior, saying he often harms himself, plays rough, refuses normal food, jumps out of windows, eats his own waste, etc., in an attempt to explain his child's injuries and evidence found at their home. He says that this kind of behavior has been going on for around eight years, so while the behavior may be alarming to them, he claims this is normal for him. He believes that if he can convince detectives that the child died as a result of his own behavior, McLean will not be held responsible. However, the more he tries to push this narrative, the more he strengthens the case for criminal negligence, as he would have allowed this behavior to continue under his supervision. Possibly knowing this, he also stresses how tired he is, claiming he hasn't slept in days as a result of Dakota's behavior, and reiterates how long this has been happening for so he can use this explanation later when he's inevitably asked why he didn't do more to stop the behavior or get Dakota help. Well, this is what happened. I ain't slept in about three days, right? The kid keep falling down the stairs, keep knocking his head around. Uh, it looked like something was wrong with his stomach last night that I noticed. And uh, I gave him some water to throw it up. You know what I mean? I had him drink, like, several cups of water because it looked very odd and normal and i know that uh he used to eat in his own shit. so i just wanted to make sure that he was okay so uh he drank the water that was it and uh i i guess he goes back upstairs and acting out some more i mean jumping off the banister uh shitting everywhere pissing everywhere the usual might i add i've been doing with this for probably like since he was two years old, he'd been doing this. Yeah, and uh, so I'm, I'm very tired. I ain't slept in three days, so I'm just sitting there. And uh, here he come rolling down the stairs again, ba doom ba doom. So uh, I tell him to go back upstairs. A little while later, I go up there. I see a stick in his ass, like a chair leg. So I ask him, what is he doing? And he's just steady. You know what I mean? This steady doing what he do. This ain't the first time he tried something like that. So uh, I see blood on the ground when I asked him to pull it out. You know what I mean? Blood squirted immediately. Now I'm freaking out. I'm like, hurry up. You need to get downstairs so I can get you in the shower. You know what I mean? And see what's going on. <clears throat> so at the time, I didn't think nothing of it. I just see that he bruised up as usual. Seeing the old way, he never stopped. He would find any way, any type of way, anything to use just to put a bruise on his body. So uh, as a parent, I just put him in the shower. I mean, I put him in the bathtub to try to, uh, you know, get some of the swelling to go down or, or whatever the situation may have been, you know, clean him up, make sure he was good. So uh, I'm sitting on the couch. He like, Dad, come here. No, he like, Dad, help. So I come up the stairs to help him. And that's when I noticed his body was cold, very, very, very cold. So I took him downstairs 
and try to rinse him off, you know, to see if he'll shake out of it, wake up. I mean, uh, I had no clue of knowing that he was sick to that extent or that, uh, or, yeah, or that, that this is going to go anywhere near this far. I mean, I just figured he was doing his normal acting out. I mean, he was kind of tweaking a little bit, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, as far as uh, just, you know, like this, uh, this is my way of describing it, you know, just like this. But this is something that he done pulled for many years. I mean, all the time, damn near every day, anytime he don't want to have his way, this is what he's pulling. Can't get him to eat his breakfast. He don't want to eat his breakfast. All he want to do is eat his feces. So I'm like, all right, at this point, there is nothing I can do but let him sit there and lay down. Okay? So, uh, like I said, he said, Dad, help. And I came up the stairs. That's why I'm shocked as fuck right now. I'm not even in crying or nothing. I'm just like in shock. Like, my child really did have, you hear me? Is what I don't understand. Now, I know them girls didn't do nothing to him and kill him. I mean, I just don't understand it. I'm very serious. That's where I'm at. I'm, it was shocking. No. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, he had marks all over his body. It's every day. Now, sometimes I had to stank his behind just to prevent him from hurting himself. This boy jumped out the window before. Out, just straight out the window. There is no stopping him. I'm afraid. I've been telling people I was afraid, but at the same time, it was nothing I can do. And I mean, I can understand the fact that he had marks all over his body. You'd be surprised just to sit there and watch him do it. Or just to see there and you could just be like, stop or no or don't. And he's going to whack. He's going to bam. He's going to jump. He's going to flip. He's going to kick. We had stairs. He was letting up. He would kick him like that. You know what I mean? And kick him all kind of ways in the corner. So he lived upstairs. At times, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. At times. Well, at first he was living downstairs, but uh, the smell got too strong. Not only that, my little brother, I just got custody of him probably like two years ago. I've been taking care of my little brother. Okay, so he's been living with us. Do y'all have my little brother? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I'll just make sure he's all right. Okay, so, uh, yeah, my little brother started living with us, right? And the bop, want to get aggressive with him and, you know what I mean, try to take his clothes off in front of him and stuff like that. So, I mean, I had to protect him. I had to just uh, send Dakota upstairs. I mean, the living environment, it was fine. It wasn't, uh, it was it was perfect, actually. When he went up there, it didn't stink. He had a bed, he had clothes, he had everything he wanted. But this is the point that I'm trying to make as a parent. This is how far this shit go. Like, I, uh, I can't get a boy a blanket. Because if I give him a blanket, now he has marks all over his body from him pissing on himself and wrapping around his own blanket. You know what I mean? If he did that continuously, there'd be rashes and, you know, that's unsanitary. Flat out. And there, and there ain't no way to keep a child like that clean that just going to do what they want to do no matter what, regardless. I mean, I done had social services out there. I called the police. The police told me he was being unruly and that, uh, and that uh, he, when he got a little older, they'll be able to, you know, uh, put him in some type of juvenile center. And I mean, uh, this is the day after he jumped out the window. I mean, I'll be having, I'm traumatized every day. It's a new show. My child almost lost his foot. Here I am laying in the bed thinking he's sleep. You know what I mean? I'm, at, I'm laying in the bed thinking he's sleep. And uh, I hear bam, bam, bam at the door. If you upstairs, what are you doing outside? So not only did he jump through a window, but the window he jumped through was probably a little bigger than the square. A big fella like that, straight through it. I mean, he's impressive. So, uh, like I said, he did that, and uh, it just went on and on and on and on. Like I said, like I said, uh, any time that I put my hands on him. It was to keep him from hurting himself. And I mean, as far as I wouldn't beat him with anything, I would just grab him and like, hey, enough's enough. Like arms behind your back, like the police do. You know what I mean? It was never I'm um, punching the eye or slam you or, you know what I mean? 
Never tried to do nothing out the way to him just to keep him from hurting himself. That was my biggest fear, and he just continued to hurt himself every day. I mean, he had food, fresh food, clothes, all that. All he wanted to do is show out and tell me that he acting out, and, he, and there's nothing I can do about it. And uh, he just pissing his shit every day. I feel like that could have been the cause right there. I mean, I'm not sure. Like I said, I just it just hit me maybe like three days ago because, I mean, I literally have to watch him use the bathroom every day, you know, just to make sure he's using it there and not upstairs. But not only that, but every time I go up there, there's mountains of urine and mountains of feces all around, all around the room, the walls, everywhere. And, I mean, I've told social services about uh, how he used to, crack itself and hurt itself and all that but i mean that they said when he turned 12 years old i could have looked into getting him into this one program or one facility he just turned he would have turned 11 three days from now and like i said ma'am i am shocked right now at this point that he died never seen it coming this is an obvious juxtaposition McLean spent the last several minutes describing how recklessly and destructively Dakota normally acts, implying that his death being caused by one of these routine behaviors would not be entirely unlikely. But then, he immediately says he never could have seen the death coming, which means he was either lying about Dakota's usual behavior, or he was completely oblivious to the point of criminal negligence resulting in death. Three days from now, your son turns 11? Yes, ma'am. What's his birthday? The 28th. What's today? Okay. Hmm? That today? was correct. 25th? Is today the 25th? No. What is it? The 13th. Oh. Okay. 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 Okay sticking his butthole on the table. If you flip this thing upside down and knock this back off, that's just straight ride out. But that's that's the kind of stuff he was into. I ain't never sexually harassed my child or do not like that. That's homophobic. And I, I mean, that's homo and I ain't far from gay, you know what I mean? Here, McLean says he's never sexually harassed his child completely unprompted. He also says that he's far from gay, implying that he couldn't have done anything sexual with Dakota, not because he's the father or because he was a child, but because they're both male. You'll see this line of reasoning come up a couple more times as we go through this interrogation. I never played with their private parts. You see my little brother, correct? Healthy as an ox. We give him the same treatment. One just chews to eat his food, and the other one chooses to eat his shit. And I mean, he got fed three, four times a day. He would take 10 hours, 20 hours to eat his food. Yep, I mean it. There it is, 20 hours to eat a, a bowl of noodles. How is he supposed to gain weight? Or how is he supposed to be healthy, you know what I mean? Non-stop, so I'm dealing with that on top of the fact that we, now we ain't got no health insurance. Because he even got in trouble so damn much to the point where I can't leave the house for two minutes, or not one minute, without worrying about is he killing himself, hurting himself, doing what he doing. I really don't know why my child is dead right now. I still don't know. And that's what I would like to know, please. This is the first time McLean acknowledges explicitly that Dakota is dead, and the first time he asked detectives a question about what happened to him. He's been talking for the last 10 plus minutes straight with minimal interjection from police. Um, yeah, well, let me ask you this. He stayed upstairs. Did he stay up there? He stayed up there, right? Well, you yeah. were talking about him pooping and peeing and yeah. everything up there. Yeah. Like, but, locked but, up there? No, no, uh, uh We never locked him up there. Like, uh, the lot's been on the house since uh, we had the dogs when they were smaller. They would get into fights. We just never took the time to take them down, you know what I mean? But I, we got pit bulls there. And we ain't separated, made it be blood all over everywhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
So that's what the lobster's for. Like, he would come down. I would invite him to watch TV. And he's my son. He was handsome. He looked just like me. You know what I mean? And uh, I would invite him to sit down and watch TV and this, that, and the third. And he would just shit and piss. I mean, the smell was so loud. I can go up there and clean it every day. In five years from now, you'll probably smell it. So if it was the fumes, I don't know what it was. I mean, I did everything in my power. That bucket that was upstairs, I used to put soap and water in it and have him clean it up. Clean the floor up, clean your walls, clean up, clean it up. Like, it's just unbearable. I'm downstairs on the couch. I can't even sleep because the smell is so strong. You know, I mean, outrageous. And he getting put in the shower every day on a regular, you know what I mean? But regardless, it'd be like you never put a drop of water or soap on him. It's very shocking right now, the fact that he did. I mean it. I never thought that he would end up dead. I figured if he ate his own poop, I even Googled it. Like, will it hurt you? And they was like, nah, you know, to a certain extent. You, you know what I mean? It, just to see, because, I mean, I was to the point where, who, what am I supposed to do? Call the police and be like, oh, my son is over here eating his shit again today. Did you ever take him to the doctor? Yeah, he's been to the doctor. He has? Yeah. What's his doctor? It's been so long, I don't even know. I just know it was probably like when my health insurance ran out. Probably close to three years ago. So the kid hasn't seen a doctor in three years? Yeah, but he been to the uh, hospital and left in that. When so was he, he at the hospital? Probably like a year ago when he jumped out the window. Eight children? Yeah, he always been very healthy. Okay. What, what, who was his PCP? His primary caregiver? I didn't have no primary, primary. care not, physician. Not, I didn't have one. Where did you take him to the doctor? I only took him to the hospital. And I only took him to the doctor when he needed it. And he ain't, it won't, nothing wrong with him. He's eating his own feces. There's something wrong with him. I mean, this is the first real challenge by police. It's very light and non-confrontational. But it lets McLean know that they aren't just going to accept his explanation without issue as much as I'm sure he was hoping they would. I mean, this, but, but besides the fact, now I took that into consideration. I, he's been to counseling his whole life. See, I can tell y'all. So where did he go to therapy at? He ain't been to therapy in, uh, in a little while. He said he been, he's gone to he, he has been, I'd say, probably like four years ago. So he's been in counseling for four years, but he's been in the whole life. Maybe off and on. I probably uh, had some online counseling services or online counselors talk to him. But, uh, so where did he go to school? I'm he's homeschooled. Thank you. But the thing is, the thing is, like, uh, when I did have counselors speak to him, he would play them so slick to the point where it'd be like, you know, he's all good and golden. Like, they wouldn't believe the story that I'd tell him. You know what I mean? McLean says that his 10-year-old child, who was supposedly suffering so severely from mental health issues that he ate his own excrement and forced harmful objects into his own body on a daily basis, was slick enough to play every therapist he was seen by, which is absolutely ridiculous. For me to tell somebody that he, he's getting it in like that, I mean, and he didn't have to do it. It's not something that he, that we forced upon him or anything like that. Like if I would give him ice cream and a couple cigarettes. Here McLean uses ice cream and cigarettes as examples of things that kids would want and would throw a fit to get. Not that I ever gave me, but just speaking in general, like, uh, he would do anything in the world, you know what I mean? Anything in the world that you ask him, only when he get his way, he was a bully. So, if you gave him cigarettes, he would do stuff? Sorry, Not buddy, I'm trying to get this. I'm just saying, if I would have gave him whatever he asked, when he, asked, he could be the perfect angel, you know what I mean? But let me say no, or you got suspended, so we can't do this. It ain't no punishing him. He got suspended, so where is he going to school? Uh, he was going to horseman. He's been homeschooled for the last two years. Who's homeschooling him? Mm, I was. Yep. Why do um, you have to think about that? I was, my lip hurt. I'm just like, mm. You know, I, I've been up for three days. As I'm telling you, I still haven't took a nap, been to sleep. So I, I'm doing my best. And you've been up for three days because he's been walking into walls and falling down. 
Oh, uh, not three days straight, but every now and then. I mean, he would he would go uh, maybe one day. Yeah, pretty much. Or yelling. No, he was just yelling and screaming. That's different than what you told us earlier, though. No, that's what he do every day. But what I'm saying is, what kept me up was his tone, yelling, screaming, singing, dancing. Boy, it's three in the morning. No sleep. Mm mm. Okay, so you homeschool him. Yes. What grade is he in? Fifth grade. Okay, what's the stuff he's learning about right now? Well, he was learning, but he refused to learn. Every book that I bought him, he pissed on it, he shit on it, he destroyed it. Pens became a factor of safety, and pencils, you know what I mean? Hey, you know what? So you're not homeschooling him. McLean, who dropped out in eighth grade, pulled Dakota out of school in third grade in order to homeschool him. It says he destroyed all his schooling equipment almost immediately, so he just gave up trying. He made no effort to replace the items or re-enroll him in public school. I was doing, I was, I had legal documents stating that he was certified to be homeschooled. Okay. But like I said, he destroyed all his equipment, all of it. I, as a parent, I can't go out and just be like, I'm getting ready to replace all this. So when was the last time he had schooling? A true education, uh, I could say probably like two years ago. Before he got pulled out, horseman. Okay. But he didn't learn anything. He wasn't doing nothing. He was threatening the teachers and telling them how he teach people a lesson and locking them out the classroom and you know just getting it in. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was locking the teachers out of the classroom. Yep. Okay. Um. You, earlier, you called him a big fella. You think he was a big fella? Do I? Yeah, a little bit. He kind of tall. Okay. So, I want to talk about today. You said you haven't been to sleep, is that right? I still have my no ma'am. Okay. So, what happened when he woke up this morning then? He never went to sleep. Okay. So, then what happened? What's been going on since 6 a.m. this morning? This is where detectives begin to establish a specific timeline. Given the evidence they already have, police have a vague idea of the time and cause of death as well as the length that the abuse had been occurring beforehand, and they want to see if McLean's story matches up. If it does, then they may gain some new information about the case. If it doesn't, which seems much more likely, then every verifiably false thing McLean says will be added to the case against him. So, uh, 6 a.m. this morning, uh, I look at the camera, I see him plunging on his, uh, his table, I mean his chair. I don't think nothing about it. I'm just like, you know, he's doing his normal weird thing. So sometimes I felt like ignorance was uh, the best answer because he was basically just seeking attention any, at any cost. You know what I mean? Any cost. He's been dealing with this since he was younger. He's been in the system since he was two years old. Anytime he didn't have his way, he'd make sure CPS show up at the house. Okay, so keep going with it. And, and he would tell him just anything. You know, the most outlandish thing. And then he said, kill myself. I'm gonna uh this that and the third and then come home and how was the day everything was fine <laughs> yeah so at 6 a.m this morning 6 a.m this morning all right so I see him doing that I'm paying no mind I'm like you know he I didn't think he was hurting himself at all so I'm like hey, what is he finna he do you didn't think he was hurting himself uh not at the time okay. I'm thinking in my head like what, what could he possibly be doing with that okay so uh all right I get up around, uh, say about eight o'clock, go get him his breakfast and stuff like that. So I go up there and he laying on his tarp and uh, he got it in his butt. I'm like, what the hell do you think you're doing? I say, pull it out right now. He wants to get the wrestling and you know what I mean? Either way. I don't know what you mean because I don't live in your house. So Well, he, he want to get wrestling and aggressive. Like he don't want me to take it out of him and he don't want me to have it, period. You know, so uh, I I grab it out, blood squirt, yep, and it started dripping. So uh, put him in the shower. I mean, I put him in the bathtub and I tried to clean it up and look at it to see if it was uh worth me taking him to the ER right away. But to the eye, my I'm not a doctor. It didn't look that bad. So I'm just thinking. What did you see? Uh just like uh his butt 
hole with a little blood because you know I checked it out afterwards. I'm like, whoa, we see. And she didn't did. And it was uh, just look a little swollen. Okay. You know. So you didn't see any injuries or anything? Not nothing too heavy. I mean, I, I seen his butt swollen and his legs and his arms and all that, but I see that every day. Okay. It's not a day where he is not going to uh, add another one. Okay. And here's the thing, as a parent, I'm afraid, I was concerned, like, then if I take him anywhere, they're going to be looking at me like I did this. You know what I mean? The nonchalance with which McLean describes these events is appalling. Even the minimized version he's currently telling would cause most people to be horrified, yet McLean speaks about them on the same level as getting stuck in traffic. This could either be an attempt to convince the detectives that this type of behavior really was normal, or it could just be an unintentional glance into his true attitude towards Dakota's well-being. So at the same time, I'm just trying to, I was trying to just get him together to where he didn't have any bruises, and then I can take him somewhere and see about um, possibly more therapy or something like that. So you know he needed some sort of treatment? I'm starting, I, it started to hit me at the, at the last phases, like his last week. It started to hit me that, uh, I mean, he started being disobedient to the point where he wouldn't do nothing that he used to do. He took a real big turn. So, uh, yeah, he started being extra disobedient. So I'm just like, I'm going to back off, you know, let him do his thing. I'll try to keep him healed up and then uh, I'll get him to a treatment. Now that he's 11, maybe there'll be more options, I'm thinking. But, uh, like I said, today, uh, it came downstairs. And uh, like I said, sharpened him up. <clears throat> he went back upstairs, told him to eat his breakfast. He didn't eat it. He just laid on his bed and he didn't eat it. So uh, I'm like, I'll just wait a while. I'm like, eventually he'll get hungry, he'll eat. He always eat. He beg for food. He's never, uh, he want more and more. Depends on what it is, you know what I mean? This is another obvious contradiction to what McLean had said earlier. His story has changed from Dakota only eats his own filth and takes 20 hours of starvation to eat real food to he's always hungry, he begs for food, he always wants more. Can I can have some more, can I have some more, some more? Sure, you can get some more. Is that 20 hours later? Or? Uh uh, not even 20 hours later. We're okay. talking uh, maybe three hours later. Okay. So I'm just sitting there, like, you know, I'm going to check on his body again, a couple hours. You know, give some time to cool off and uh, and check on it. So when I, I'm sitting on the couch and he like, Dad, help. What time was this when you heard him say, Dad, help? I can't tell you exactly. I ain't had no clock in front of me. No, approximately. Was it? I ain't been asleep in three days. The time I'm pretty bad off right now when it come down to the time. Okay. So was it? I know it was daylight. Long before you called the police or shortly before you called? Please. Uh, it, once he said that help, I called the police five minutes later. Okay. Less than that. Okay. Just so enough to upstairs, rinse him off. He's yep. upstairs and he says dad help. Yep. And you come down, you come upstairs. Yep. And what happens when you're upstairs? He's talking to you. He yeah. He called for help. Yep. He was talking to me and then uh, he just quit talking to me. And upstairs? He, yep. But he was doing like this. Okay. So I'm like, okay. Uh, was he standing? Mm -mm. But down? yeah, when I when I first when he asked me for help, he stood up like this. He was laying down mm -hmm. and he pushed up like this, like bad help. Okay. So I'm like, all right, let me go see what's wrong with him. What did he use to push up with? Uh, his bed. His bed? Yep. Okay. So he pushed up and he was like, uh, help. So I go up there to help him out and uh, he got some stuff coming out of his mouth. You know what I mean? On my head, I'm thinking of shit all automatically. Okay. But uh, cause the night before, like I said, I just noticed how big his belly was, and I gave him some water so he can throw it up. You know, if he had anything bad in him, a couple cups of water. Okay. I gave about six, seven cups. You know, trying to force him to throw it up. Is there anything bad in there? I don't know if he swallowed his fork or what he did. So I'm like, uh. Swallowed his fork. Yeah, that he was outrageous. 
Okay. Or what he would have done. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, your child, you see him one minute, next minute you see him out of belly way out here. You're like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Sure. So what I do immediately, I try to get him some water to flush it out. And, uh, so we're back to where he's calling for help, and he's used his bed to push himself mm -hmm. up. Yep. Okay. And what happens next? So I ran up there and grabbed him, and then I uh, rinsed him off. Did he walk down the steps? Did you carry kind him? Kind of sort of. Kind of sort of. Tell kinda, me how you guys came down the steps. I'm holding him like this. Is he in front of you, around, behind you, or next to you? Uh, he in front and on the side, like a little bit, because the stairs is narrow. Okay. So okay. where are your arms? My arms right here. Mm -hmm. This is where he at right here. I get that, but are, how are you under him or on top of him or how under are you? Him, under him. So you're under his arms? Yep, trying to hold him up. Okay. Yep. And he's walking? Slightly. Not much. So I'm, are you I'm, like, I'm basically doing all the work. Are you dragging his feet along or you hold? You got him up off the steps? What do you? Yeah, I, uh, I drag him a little bit. Okay. Just to, uh, you know what I mean, to hurry up because I'm trying to assess the situation. So, uh, Is he still talking? No, uh-uh. Not, not much. So he, I mean, but he's still moving. His eyes is looking at me. He's doing his normal thing. His I'm eyes like, are looking at you? Mm-hmm. Okay, what's I'm your like, normal thing? Uh, you know, just the, the freak out that I was telling you about. You know, the freak show. Okay. You know what I mean? But only, this only happens when he's got a lot of options. Did he have when his he's clothes? In trouble. Did he have clothes on? Did he have clothes on at the time? Yeah. What uh -uh. was he wearing? No, no, he didn't have no clothes on. And the reason I didn't give him no clothes is because if I give him clothes, he's going to spoil them right away. We're not talking about a, a, a two-year-old or a three-year-old. This man is 11. It, well, it would have been 11 in a couple of days. So we're talking big shit. I mean, he can pal up, eat as much as he wants, and save it for about a couple of days, and then just explode, boom, everywhere. You just smell it, and it comes dripping down the stairs like butter, melting. All right, so you're carrying him down the stairs, yep. and then what happens? McLean uses every opportunity available to further insist how bad Dakota's behavior was, to the point that police frequently have to stop him and redirect him back to the subject at hand. He may think this is helping his case, but it only makes him look more and more neglectful. Okay, so, uh... Uh, I was going to call 911. I started to call him. I said, let me check him out. Make sure he's uh, not faking me. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't sure if he was faking me or not. Cause like, what were you calling 911 for? Because he, was he said fine. he was normal. Now, the reason I was going to call 911 is because, uh, you know, he'd been throwing up. And, and like I said. When did he start throwing up? When did he throw up? Yeah. When he Remember when I told you he pushed off his bed and I checked on him. I seen him throw up come out of his mouth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I just wanted to make sure before I wasted the authorities time that he was not playing around. So I'm like, uh, you know, it is normal. You feel me? Okay. Cause usually I could be like, you stop right now. I mean, like right, right now, right now, or, uh, or really not scare him. Or I'll just be like, maybe I'll take your dinner away tomorrow. Wouldn't do that. But as a dad, I gotta, uh, come up with something. Okay. To try to make a person think that you're serious, you know what I mean? Okay. So, uh, he's like, all right, so yeah, now he's doing this. So I'm, and then I realized his eyes didn't look too good. I get on the phone. What did his eyes look like? His eyes looked like, uh, it just looked low. And it had a little red right here. It just looked a little low. But I mean, on a, on a regular, he squints him like that sometimes too. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure. So, so I think earlier you said, did you get him down the stairs? Yeah. And then after he's down the stairs, what happens? Put him in the shower. Okay. Not not the shower, but I laid him in the bathtub. Okay. And like I said, like I said, he's still doing this. I'm mainly trying to get the throw up off of him again. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right, it's smelling awful. So I'm trying to get it off of him. And I realized that uh, something may look right. So I'll call it 911. And I uh, took him off the bathtub, mm -hmm. and uh, from there, I did everything that did said to try to save my child. Uh, he did start breathing again. He was looking at me for a second again. When the EMS got there, he told me to leave out, and uh, I heard her say that he wasn't breathing again. And a couple minutes later, I heard her say he got his breath back, and then uh, 
and that was it. So you got him out of the bath, and where did you put him? I laid him on the living room floor behind the couch. Okay, and you're doing what dispatch is telling you? Yes. Okay. Did you put, did, what happened, what did he do as he was laying there and you're giving him CPR? What was, what was he doing? Mm -hmm. He wasn't doing anything. Was he breathing? Barely. Was anything coming out of his mouth? Yep, air. Air? Yep. Okay. He was breathing kind of slow, kind of slowly. Okay. Nothing else is coming out of his mouth? Yeah, he started throwing up again. Okay. Yep, so uh, what I did was I tried to lay him on the side to clear his patches way. Okay, where was he throwing up at, on the floor? Mm-hmm. Yeah? It's in that blankets, okay. and, and in that, by that jacket, and then blankets where he packed that up and it's up. Okay. Yeah, so, so did you lay him on a blanket? Uh-uh. He was just laying on the floor? Yeah, yeah, I was freaking out at this point. I'm trying to get some clothes on him and, and get him right, you know what I mean? And this is while you're on the phone with dispatch? Yes. Yes. You're trying to get him dressed? Of course. Yeah. So I he mean, cause, yeah, because so he can't go out the house butt ass naked. It's winter time. Okay. I mean, I, I, in my mind, I think I'm doing everything right. This doesn't happen every day. Okay. Every day. Okay. So how did the throw up get on the blanket and stuff? How did the throw up get on the blanket? Yeah. He might have been close enough to throw up on it. I don't know. Or it might have slid across the floor. Maybe the blanket. You know what I mean? I'm well, walking, you're the one that told me it was on the yeah, blanket. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm walking back and forth, so maybe... We scooped it on there somehow, or I'm not really sure how it got there, to be honest. How do you know it's there? I kind of see it. I kind of seen it a little bit. I'm not even 100% sure. Maybe I didn't. I've told you it's been three days. Okay. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Okay. But one thing I do know, I, I believe I seen throw up uh, on the edge of this white blanket. That's what I'm seeing in my head right now. Okay. Police bring up a specific piece of evidence, a blanket that was found at the scene with vomit on it, both to get McLean's explanation for it on record and to let him know that they've already processed some evidence from the scene and reached conclusions of their own, and they want to see if his story matches up. Was there throw up on the floor? Yes, plenty of it. A plenty lot. Of it? I mean, that's, it must be. And it was there when the medics got there and stuff? Yes. Okay. okay. Yep. Um, how long did it take the police to get back to the medics got there? The, the police is already there. The police was already there? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, I tried to cooperate with them and everything. Am I, am I the only one being charged there? I don't think anybody's been charged yet. Okay, I'm just asking. Okay. I don't know what's going on, you hear me? Yep. So, then the medics take them away and that's the last thing you know? And I'm in jail. I'm sorry? I said, yes, ma'am, then I'm in jail. You've been to jail? This is jail. I mean, I was in that back room back there. Right, but you've not been to jail. Mm-mm. Okay. So, look, I'm sitting back there. The whole time, I'm, I'm just thinking my son going to be all right, because, I mean, they put him in the back of the ambulance. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking he's going to be all right. And I ain't going to lie, just another thing I want to say. When I went to give him CPR, mm -hmm. and I uh, was taking it, whatever it was, out his mouth, it smelled so rotten, so awful. That's why I'm still kind of curious, like. Well, did you give him the breath, his, like over his mouth? Were you giving him his breath? His breath? His breath, like when you do CPR, yeah. you're supposed to breathe into their mm -hmm. mouth? Yeah, I did that. Okay. Yeah, I was giving him his breath, and I, I gave him 12 pumps on the chest, and gave him some more. But like I said, I, I had not met when the ambulance got there. So when you, um. You said that you checked his body again after this morning's incident and putting him in the bath and then you sent him upstairs for a little bit and then you said that you um, you were going to wait a little bit and check his body again. Did you ever check his body again? Uh, yes. Yeah. Not, no, I didn't because he asked me for help. I, I had a certain time that I was going to do it. Like I said, I was trying to settle down a little bit and you know what I mean? What were you trying to settle down from? It's just stressful every day when you deal with that for eight years, when you got a very handsome child that can't go to school, can't have no friends, can't do right, you know, just want to embarrass at all points. Okay. Who else was home today when this was all going on? Nobody that I was aware of. The house Nobody's been home big. all day? Mm -mm. The house is pretty big? Yeah. Yeah, nobody that I was aware of was home. Okay. So you didn't see Josiah? Mm -mm. I've seen Josiah when he came back. With Amanda. 
Okay, but you didn't I, see him before he not left? this morning, no. Were you sleeping? Mm-mm. How is it that big? No, I was there. I, yeah. Okay. I, no, I wasn't sleeping. Okay, so we not know that Josiah of. wasn't upstairs, right? Right, no. Nah. Mm -hmm. Okay. He wasn't. Does he have access to the basement? Josiah? Yeah. Uh-uh. Okay, so he would have been on that main floor? Somewhere, yeah. yeah. But he'd be so quiet. He ain't a loud child. Okay. He just, and Amanda like, wasn't there? Mm -mm, not that I'm aware of. I've been sitting there so long. Me and Jenny never talk. Why I mean, not? Just, just because there ain't no drama. That's like my girlfriend's sister, so I try to keep it short. Well, yeah. She lives with you and she helps take care of your children, right? Yeah, yeah, but still, you she know. She cooks for you guys? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you don't talk to her? Not much. Mm -mm. So you don't know if she's there or not? You don't know if Amanda's there or not? You mm -mm. don't know if Josiah's there or not? No. Nope. All I know is that uh, I, I went when, when he called for help. No, I'm talking about first thing this morning, six o'clock when you took. I would him imagine breakfast. they probably would have been. But Did I you share a bed with Amanda. Yeah, yeah, but I ain't sleep on. I ain't go to bed. I haven't been to bed. Okay. So where have you been? We're about to sit on the couch. Sit on the couch. Watch them. It's like a 24-hour watch. It only take them a second. The, the, the flip down the stairs over the rail. I mean, not nothing small. So you watched him on the camera? I was, yes. Okay, how come we couldn't see that view of the camera when we were there? That I don't know. Hmm. Did you disconnect the camera? Not at all. Not at all? No. Nah, it wasn't but, unplugged? The man was right there with me the whole time. Well, I mean, we weren't there the whole time. No, I'm, I'm not uh, following you, can you? Did you unplug it before you called the police? No. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, it's just odd to me that we couldn't see that view that you keep talking about. It, it works sometimes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. It's a 24 hour job, though. Right. So but like I said, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. I do the best I can. I okay. can't keep functioning for 24 hours on the regular. Okay. So, and you said you don't ever lock those doors? Nah, -uh, not at night. Only when I'm uh, putting a dog up there or I bring one of my outside dogs in or something like that, that's the only time. When Dakota's up there, do you ever lock the door? Uh-uh. Okay. Um, what room, where in the attic is, where is Dakota's room? Well, look, it used to be in the back area, the biggest part, the biggest part. Okay. So we jumped off board, so we jumped out the window. So you're talking about upstairs in the attic? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so where's his room at now? It was uh, still in the attic, but just the, the smaller portion. Okay. Um, where, so where is his bed at then, upstairs? His bed? Mm -hmm. Every morning I put it in a, uh, I put it in that back area. So he won't uh, shit on it, piss on it. Maybe he'll have something clean to lay down in. Okay, so you, you lock that area? Once you put his bed back there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's where it was today then? Yeah. Back in that area a lot? Yeah. Because look, that'd just be another thing for him to hurt himself on. Okay. The area ain't that big. He would just be like, I'm going to flip off the bed and, and crack my nugget. And then, you know, I'll be here regardless. Okay. So you so you lock that back area? Yeah, I lock that back. Yes. And the attic. So the attic's kind of like split up. You have the area where like the stairs are. Mm -hmm. And then you have that like back room where there's like a blanket hanging from the door right. and a door and a lock. Right. Right? Okay. And so it every to, day you take your bed right. from the big area into the small area and yeah. you throw it in there yeah. and you lock the door. Yeah. Okay. So oh. it used to be all one. So you put that door and lock in there? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Because uh, for your safety, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that's the measures. I had to board up. If you can't look. I boarded up all the windows in the room just to keep him from jumping out the window. Yeah. Okay. This is another explanation by McLean in regards to the modified attic room that he kept Dakota locked in 24-7. He was telling the truth about the lack of furniture, the tarp, the boards over the windows, and the heavily locked door, but he insists it was for protection, not punishment. So when, you, when he was calling for help, where was he? In the big area by the stairs? Yep. Okay. And, uh, yep, I heard him say, dead, dead. Straight up there. And he pushed himself up off of his bed? Yep. 
Okay, all right. Um, and then you helped him down the stairs, mm -hmm. and you put him in the back, mm -hmm. and you took him out of the back, mm -hmm. and um, did, what did you do with the water that was in the bathtub? You left it in there. You left it in there? Yeah. Did you leave the cigarette butt in there too? Possibly. Okay. Right. And then, so you laid him on the floor there in the living room behind the couch, mm -hmm. and he's throwing up. Mm -hmm. What kind, What clothes did you put on him? Uh, gray, I mean, some, some um, tan pants, uh, and a black t-shirt. Okay. And where are his, the rest of his clothes? He, he shaved, pissed them off, ripped them off. That's how bad it was. If I sent him to school, they called me saying he don't have a hood. His jacket is ripped in half. I got a price tag. I just went out and bought the jacket a day ago. Okay. But he hasn't been to school in two years. Right. But I'm talking yeah. about this is his norm. So, I mean, uh, so he had has other clothes. I mean, from his school year. Because he obviously hey, didn't wear the same thing every day. Okay. So he had other clothes and other clothes and other clothes. But it got to the point where uh, I, just, I just let him get his shorts and his t-shirt because uh, he never went nowhere. So when you went upstairs to get him, he was naked? Yeah. So he just sits upstairs naked all day? Sometimes, yeah. Why is that? Because he pissing shit on himself and it, it, it is giving him a rash. Like he is soak it down so good. I'm not exaggerating, man. Sometimes I go up there and I think I'm in the Pacific Ocean. How? I don't know. Can one get so much water? I mean, I monitor his water too. I haven't given him uh, more than he can bear or anything like that. You know what I mean? I try to give him enough to stay hydrated and uh okay so these injuries that he has they just appeared or no they he had them over time i mean but what was i supposed to do uh take him to the doctor but look here i always assessed him I always checked him and made sure nothing was broken or too too far back in my eyes i mean because at the same time you got to understand this I done had social services at my house maybe 40, 50 times. I done had, uh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for me to bring him to the doctor, like, oh, he cracked his nugget again. And social services already told me the only way they're going to take him is if they charge me with something. Like neglect or it's not, I can't do this. Can y'all please help me? So your story, I just want to go back to this too. You said this morning, first thing this morning, I think you said around 6 a.m. on the camera, you noticed he was clenching himself, I think was your word? Yeah. So he is, so he is, um. But I wasn't quite sure because the so, light was off. Okay, so, so like, there was like a yellow stool thing. Is that what you're talking about? Mm-hmm. Okay, so. He must have snapped it off because last time I checked it was, uh, it was still connected inside of the thing. I'm sorry, it, what? It was still connected inside of the stool. What do you mean? The wooden piece. Mm -hmm. The wooden piece was? Still connected. Who said anything about the wooden piece not being connected? Who said anything about it not being connected? You, you said, said that he must have snapped it off. Yeah, he did. I had to. I noticed that this morning. Morning. And that's what he was plunging. Mm hmm. Could, can you describe what you mean by plunging to me? All right. So look. He had all right a chair like this. Right. You take the back off. Mm -hmm. That's why I sit flat on the ground. Okay. And I seen him going like this. You hear me? I wasn't telling if I didn't. I wasn't able so to tell. So he's putting the chair like in his yep. butt. That's yep. what you're saying he's doing. Yep, but here's the thing. I wasn't able to tell if that's what he was doing or if he was just taking another shit. Because every night he'll get up, he'll do stuff like this and, and just, you know, slam it and scream. Ah! You know what I mean? Now I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You know, I got to work. He only do it on the days that I got to work the most. Where do you work? If ever I did work, whenever I can. I can I try to go to the temp service leg work, but I can't never work there that often because of the anxiety, the stress. I mean, I'm trying to hold her together. But uh, so so this morning at 6 a.m. you see him, and I'm using your words, plunging on this chair. Not quite sure. I seem close to it, and that's what it looked like to me. It just so you've seen like, him do this before? 
Uh, yep, but usually with his fingers and uh, he tried a couple of toys one time. That's all sorts of services. I mean, they like you can't stop them from being gay or, or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you think he's doing this because he's gay? I'm not sure if he wants to hurt his. I know he like to hurt himself every day. It's a combination. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Further solidifying his ignorance and homophobia, McLean says he believes Dakota may have acted like this because he was gay. And so then later on, you said something about the tarp being up his butt. The tarp being up his butt. You said no. that he pulled uh, it out and he was squirting blood. Yeah, yeah. The tarp. On the tarp. No, he pulled the stick out or whatever the stool piece. He pulled it out of his ass. So you did see it in his ass then. Yes, the second time okay. I came upstairs. Because like I said, the first time I'm just watching him. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm just trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He do it for a little bit and he stopped. It was all good. And then... uh, You didn't go up and check on him that time? Mm-mm. Because -mm, he, he got himself together quick. So, uh... uh. But at that point you knew he didn't poop because you said he would throw it if he pooped. Not all the time. You don't okay. poop the same thing every day. But you didn't see poop from the camera? Uh, no, nah, I can't see it on the camera. Okay. No. Okay. So, uh, so I had to go up there and check, of course. Okay. So, but you didn't go up and check the first time. You waited until the second time. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because I didn't want to, if somebody was home, I didn't want to wake the house up or cause more chaos. You know what I mean? Where would everybody my, be? My, my, dog, my dog, my dog at the working, uh, my girl work, uh, Jenny go for walks. Where's, what time's your girl work? Evening, morning, it varies sometimes. It varies. It's not every, it's not in the evening only. Uh, lately it's been, but it varies sometimes. So, okay. like I said, uh, I didn't want to be a, a, a hassle that early in the morning. Like I said, I haven't been to sleep. So I got to try to stay calm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As I can to, to, to uh, deal with the situation again, you know what I mean? So I go up there, I'm like, get that out your ass. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He wants to wrestle. I finally yank it out. So you pulled it out of his butt? Yep. So how far in was it? I can't say. That's the thing. I don't know. You don't know? Mm-mm, because I, I ripped it out so quick. Okay. Yeah, that, and that's so just inappropriate. And then he started squirting blood everywhere. Not much. It was just like, a, just a real little bit. A little bit here, a little bit there. So I'm like, all right, let's have a look at it. You know what I mean? And all I see is it was swollen a little bit. You didn't see any tears or cuts or mm -mm. no? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Right. Not at the time, no ma'am. Okay. So you take him out there and you put him in the bath? Yeah. Okay. Is that the same bath water that was in there later or did you change the bath water? Same. Same bath water? Yeah. Okay. So. Because I usually keep it the same because, uh, like I said, he's, we, he's taking several baths a day. So you. So he's bleeding from his butt. Hmm? And you put him in the bath? Yes, ma'am. And it's the same bath water that he was put in. This portion of the interrogation has to be skipped because the audio is corrupted, but I'll give you a quick synopsis of what happens here. McLean states that he only saw minor injuries on Dakota. He again acknowledges that his son is dead, but he says he does not feel responsible, specifically saying, I don't think I killed my child. He goes off on another tangent about how poorly behaved and self-injurious Dakota was. Then detectives ask about the tarp he had mentioned earlier. He explains that every morning he would remove the bed from the attic room and he would put down a tarp for Dakota to lay on for the rest of the day. They also ask again about the table leg and he repeats the same story he said before. They ask how Dakota got downstairs and he says that he carried him down. And finally, detectives ask where Dakota usually ate, which McLean says in his room or the attic. In the attic? Yeah. Okay. Is there a light up there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had TVs up there. Or all that. It was a room. But uh, he, he screwed up. But that's not what it is today. Uh-uh. Today yeah. it's an empty room with a broken stool and a bucket. Right. But it usually be his bedroom, like I said. We I open it up at night, I bring his bed out, and bring his tarp out. And by his bed, you mean like a green lawn chair I had to bed. go with that route because you got to understand as a parent when you got a when you got a 11 year old pissing and shitting on that thing every day 
What are you supposed to do? Put a mattress? I'm just making sure that that's the bed that you're talking about. Yes, ma'am. The green cotton mm -hmm. lawn chair looking. Yeah. And, so the, what, and the reason did I'm, you put it in the other room then? You said when? Yeah. This morning. Well, a, a little bit. Yeah, about mid morning. Yeah. Probably after I went and checked on them the uh, first time. Yeah. So you no, got yeah, second time after I went and checked on him. I'm like, we got to get this up. And I'm just looking over here. He's responsive at the time. Like I said, he he responsive. So I'm like, let me just get this out the way so we don't trip or get hurt. And I get him downstairs immediately. So you um, talk about these outbursts that he has all the time. 24-7 it sounds like, right? He's keeping you up at night. He's being defiant. He's having these outbursts or this acting out. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any of that on video that you could show us what you mean by that? This is the first time detectives ask for any kind of proof of Dakota's behavior. Until now, they've let McLean explain himself with minimal interruption, possibly to build rapport. They could also just be trying to get him to give as much detail as possible, so when they lay out the conflicting evidence, it'll be more impactful. Regardless, the attitude shifts from here. Oh no. Mm -mm. because it would be so embarrassing for me to be walking around with, with that in my phone like I loan my phone to my friends and stuff like what would they think of that <laughs> okay. um, earlier you said that you've been telling people about these outbursts you've been telling all these people about his crazy behavior and all this stuff he's doing who have you yeah. been telling uh, well CPS only the 30 40 times they came to my house okay. but they never found me to be a unfit parent or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. or, Who else or, have you been telling? And the police. The last time I called the police. Mm -hmm. the so those are the only people that you're telling that he's so they, outlandish and crazy? Yup. Okay. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I'm an adopted child. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any other siblings real close to me that I could be like, you know what I mean? Share that personal level with. I got a couple friends that I tell, like, you know what I mean? But other than that, I mean, because I even asked a friend, like, what would make a child? So you did talk to a friend about this? Yeah. Who's that? What friend did you talk to? My friend John. John what? I don't know his last name. I just know he used to live in Dayton uh, probably about three months ago. So he's a personal friend that you can confide your business about what your kid's doing, but you don't know his last name? Nah, you know how it'd be. I, we just hang out often. What's his phone number? I don't know it. How do you get in touch with him? I don't talk to him no more. We ain't friends. Three months ago, how did you get in touch with him? Three months ago, I would just go to the, I would just go to the area he hang out in. All right. And his name's just John. Yeah. What's John look like? Uh, light skin, uh, long braids. What's his street name? Skinny. Skinny black. That's a street name, or that's a description of him. That's his name. Skinny black. Skinny black. All right. Mm -hmm. Where's he hang out at? I don't know where he hang out currently. But where I, was he I, hanging out I three months just, ago? I used to just see him at the bus stop by Salem, and we'd kick it. Drink. Which bus stop on Salem? Uh, close to Walgreens. And we just drink beers and stuff. How often do you drink? Uh, uh, every other day. Every other day. What do you drink? What's your drink of choice? Mm, Coke Forty Five. Okay. How much do you drink? Maybe one or two a day. I mean, one or two every other day. Not that much. Any drugs? Mm -mm. Marijuana? Yeah, but recreational only and religious. What religion? Rasta. Okay. Um, As detectives begin to challenge McLean, even about simple things like his friend's name or who he discussed Dakota's behavior with, he starts shifting in his chair much more than before, leans back in an attempt to distance himself, and touches his face several times, all of which could be indicators that he's not being truthful, or at the very least, is anxious. There's a tablet in the bathroom. I think it has a code. You, what's the code to the tablet? The code to the tablet is... I don't know. It's 1998. changed so much. It's not my tablet. Who is it? It's my girl's. Amanda? Yeah. Do you have a phone? Yes, I do. 
When did you Google about him eating his feces? I can't remember. Recently? Last uh, couple weeks? Mm-mm, it's been a good while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I tried to check in on it like a long time ago. So when did... When I first realized that's what he was doing, but he never did it. He was at one point, like, he was just spread it around. He would never, you know, eat it like every day. I mean, eat it every day like he used to. Mm-hmm. So when did he stop breathing? Uh, he stopped breathing after I laid him down and uh, he was still moving and talking a little bit. You know what I mean? Okay. And uh, right, he just said, Dad. I'm like, okay, that was it. Went Are you on the phone with 911 at this point or no? Mm-hmm. I got on the phone with 911 after I got him out the bed, so, yeah. Okay, so then when you laid him on the floor, he you would have been breathing. on... He was still breathing. Yeah, he was still breathing. When he said, Dad, and he's laying on the floor, you would have been on the phone with 911? Uh, I went up there to see what was wrong with him. This is before I, I don't know what's wrong with him. Was, oh, I thought five seconds ago, I thought you just said you got him out of the bath and you laid him on the floor. I had asked he, you when he, he stopped did. breathing. And you said that he said dad, so he was still breathing. No, nah, he won't. Uh, he was still breathing, but he didn't say dad then. He was just, uh, you know, a little coherent. That's why he was just a little. So why did you start CPR? Why? Because cause, uh, as I'm on the phone with the uh, ambulance, she told me to check for a pulse, and it stopped. And that's when I started CPR. Okay. So he stopped breathing while you were on the phone with 911? Yes, ma'am. So what did you tell 911 when they originally answered the call? He not, I can't remember. I'm thinking I'm telling him uh, my son is unresponsive and he's not breathing. But he was breathing. And but he it, was responsive. It, it was off and on. It wasn't enough. You get what I'm saying? Okay. It wasn't enough. I'm still breathing. Did now. you call 911 immediately or did you wait a little bit? No, immediately. And nobody was home when you called 911? Mm, not that I'm aware of, no ma'am. Okay. Like I said, I've been up for three days. I, I mean, I barely made people who've been in that house around me like this. I don't pay attention to it much. Only concern I'd be worried about is if he about to crack his head open uh, again. That's my only concern. Yeah, that is my only concern, I promise you, mama. And look, this is what I was trying to tell you. He, he did his leg like this on the stairs one day. Boom, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Both of them. Boom, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, I've been checking on him, right? This is over a course, three-day period. And every day I'm checking his wounds, he got him packed with feces. What, it packed with feces today? Today? No. No? Not that I know of, no. Okay. But they were packed with feces yesterday? And the day before that, and the day before that, and the day before that. I, I mean, wonder why I didn't get to do that today. We clean it every day. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder too. I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm still shocked. I'm telling you, I don't know. And it was like, uh, he didn't make it. I'm like, wow. Are, are you serious? How? Like, what would kill him? I don't know. So we're here to find out from you. I don't think that, uh, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. What would kill him? I don't know. I really don't. The way McLean talks about Dakota's injuries being regularly packed with feces, only to immediately switch to professing his innocence and claiming he doesn't know what could have killed him, is insane and demonstrates how truly detached he was from his son. That's what I was trying to tell the officers, like, I really did not do this. I really did not do this. At what point did you dress him? Did you dress him before or after you called 911? I dressed him before. Okay, so you get him out of the bathtub, he's laying there. Mm -hmm. He's not really doing much? Yeah, just a little, you know, just little movements and little eye eye movements. I'm like, put your clothes on. I'm helping him put his clothes on. Put his clothes on. And, uh... Once I laid him back after that again, it was, it was bad. Uh, 
all I know is I opened his mouth to give him CPR and I smelled the worst thing ever. And I started gagging and I tried to clean his face off and get right back to it. Okay. Um, so at what point you go upstairs to get him after he called out to you, mm-hmm. bring him downstairs, put him in the bath, mm-hmm. lay him down on the floor, you get him dressed, call 911. When did you go back upstairs and lock the, the back part up? I probably did that before I even brought him down. So after he called out for you, you locked it? Yeah, because he was still looping. Like I just had to get the, the tarp and the bed out of the way because I realized that I had to carry him. It was in my way. Okay. And if the closet is right there, so I'm just, boom, in the closet. That way I don't have to carry him and trip and fall and be hurt again. I'm, I thought the bed and the tarp was already put away. Sometime I put it away every, I mean, every morning, every day it gets put away at a certain point. Okay. It was still out at this time. Okay, all right. So before, he calls out for you and you run over there and you throw that stuff in there and lock the door. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else that you can think of that would have caused these injuries that killed him? No. Besides him skydiving off that banister, I do not Sky know. Skydiving off that banister? Pretty much. What okay. banister? You know how it's a railing right there in that room? I mean, in 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 the uh, in his bedroom, you know how it's a a rail mm-hmm. going across. He climbing and jump, jump, flip, roll, smack, all the time now. But it wouldn't matter if I had him downstairs, upstairs, or around the corner. He will always find a way. He tried to jump out my car before. So he stopped breathing once you were on the phone with 911. And that's, they gave you directions? On CPR? Yeah, I slapped my hands down his throat, try to clear out his airway. Got that really bad smell. But yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, stay still for a minute. We'll be back. That water is yours. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I truly don't believe them girls did nothing to hurt him. You don't think those girls did anything to hurt him? I would like, I would like to think not. I don't think so. I believe my child would have told me. But okay. me knowing his actions and seeing him every day, I, I mean, yeah. Okay. Right. Detectives leave McLean alone for about eight minutes, most likely to regroup, process what they've heard so far, and devise a strategy moving forward. Although, given the nature of what they've heard, I wouldn't blame them if they just needed a break. While they're gone, McLean puts his head in his hands, sighs, and drinks his water. This could be a sliver of remorse for his actions, but it's more likely caused by the stress of the interrogation. He likely knows how ridiculous his story sounds, and is worried the detectives aren't buying it. Okay. Hey, real quick. Do you have your phone? Do you know where it is? It might be in my truck. In your truck? Yeah. When did you put it there? I just lose it. I just leave it every day or lose it somewhere every day. Well, where did you call 911 from? Oh, my phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did. I used my phone to call 911. And, uh, I don't know what I did with it. I was running around the house, freaking out, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. After I got off the phone with him, I knew the officer was going to be there and anything like that. Like I said, I don't know where I set it in a blink of an eye. Did you put it in your truck? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I wouldn't have did that. That don't make no sense. I wouldn't have ran outside and put it in my truck with my child in there. Mm-hmm. No, ma'am. 
Okay. We were looking at your history. It looks like you had a couple. Um, you got a couple things going on. Oh, the small stuff. Yeah. The small stuff McLean is referring to are some of his previous and ongoing criminal charges, which include bail jumping, disorderly conduct, child endangerment, assault, battery, carrying a concealed weapon, and felony strangulation and suffocation. In one case, McLean choked a man unconscious because he thought the man had stolen his phone, only to punch him in the face and steal the man's phone when he regained consciousness. In another case, McLean hit an ex-girlfriend over the head with a pipe and then dragged her by her hair to a car, punched her repeatedly, and drove off with her. Yeah, like the child endangering. What was that? My child was, I was, I went to my baby mama house. I ain't even had custody of kids. I went to sleep a night at my baby mother house. Our kids was three and four years old. And uh, one of them unlocked the door and went outside and they was in their diapers playing in the front yard. And that's what it was about. My mom took the kids for a day or two and gave them right back to me. Okay. There was one in here too for uh, strangulation. That was on a guy that uh, that it was, it was an even match. He attacked me and uh, I defended myself. I'm not a violent person, I just defended myself. And the guy actually came to court and told the truth and spoke on my behalf. Okay. Everything else was just driving and nothing. So where is your older child? My son Khalil? Yeah. I think he's staying in uh, Seattle, Washington. With him? His mom. Okay. What's his mom's name? Uh, Paris. Paris? Mm-hmm. Paris Collins? Yep. Did you ever talk to her? Uh, she had him. She took the photo for me for a little bit. And, uh, that was about it. She gave him back. And, uh, that was it. Has he been anywhere, like, has he been to visit her anytime the last couple of years? Mm -mm. No. No. Has he been anywhere else, like, outside of Dayton? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, he's been, uh, I want to say maybe one time or two times after, after I left the state, he probably stayed at my girlfriend's mom's house. But, uh, she watched him about a day or two and sent it back. That was about it. Wisconsin? Yeah. Okay. For medical needs? Uh, I think so. Can we get one for children's? Huh? Can we get one sign for the children's? I don't know if there's another one. And my mother's name is uh, Tamika Nicholas. Your mom? Yeah, because she might want to know about JoJo. Tamika Nichols? Mm-hmm. Living in Nashville. I do not have that. But why I got you here, would you be willing to consent to DNA, giving us a DNA standard? Since McLean has already admitted to removing the table leg, putting Dakota in the bath, and giving him CPR, it's unlikely that his DNA will make much of a difference in this case. This was likely done to gauge his reaction to being asked, as well as to let him know that they are being very thorough with collecting evidence in this case. What do you want my DNA for? Yes, ma'am. I mean, that's a... I mean, I gave y'all legal consent. I've been cooperating the whole time. Right. I mean, I snapped out when they told me my child was dead. I just don't believe it. I feel like they're trying to put that on me. I'm going to have you take those out and just rub them around your cheeks and stick them back in. This retaining to that crown. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm trying to understand um, these marks all over him. 
like I said, every day. He and can't do that on his back. Every day. Oh, he slams back. He runs. He jumps. And where however land, and he lands. I mean it. Or, you know what he'd do? Excuse me. If, if you could just pay attention for a second. You know how he got that rail right here by the stairway? Mm-hmm. Boom. That's what he do to me. Boom. Hard as he can. Just fall out. Why? I don't know why. I never understood it. It's all in that. All because he uh, didn't get his way every time that he wanted it. It didn't take much to make him upset. You know, he was a bully. He was he, he wanted to go back to school, but he didn't understand that he can't go in the classroom and do that and lock the teachers out and, and uh, get suspended all the time. Well, I mean, I was trying to work back then. I had a job paying $18 an hour. I was working good. And uh, I lost it because of my child. Because he kept getting suspended. And he kept getting his uh, job suspended and kicked off the bus. And, you know. Well, I think you know we've talked to the other people here. Okay. And uh, your story is not consistent with his injuries as theirs, okay? I will tell you that. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say. Well, yeah. it's your chance. Like, I understand if you were frustrated with him at different points because you hadn't slept or because he would do things that bothered you or disgusted you. Oh, There's your chance to say it. But only, to blame him on him like he's doing him, yeah, like we know the, that's the not only the thing. The only thing I probably did, the only thing I probably did, is sink his bottom or hold him down to keep him from eating his shit. Everything else, I don't know nothing about. Or put hot sauce on his butt so it'll burn. That I did. Yeah. Yes, I did. I know you did. Yep. And why did you do that? Just try to get him to quit cracking on himself. Yep, my daddy did me like that when I was little. When I used to suck my thumb, he put some hot sauce on, and I ain't put it in my mouth no more. So you think putting hot sauce on his butt would make him not poop? Maybe it'd burn, because here's the thing. He would try to sit in it for so long to where it built up and just destroyed his skin. A bruise on a wet body that stays wet consistently all the time. I mean, it, it don't come, it don't take much. Like I said, maybe I could have put a couple of injuries on him uh, trying to keep him from eating his feces at the time, but to just, you know what I mean? Go to town on him or, or just, or just to beat him randomly. Nah, that never happened. Okay, basically, this is um, medical release just to get his medical history, obviously, to see about the time he jumped out the window and right. any other history that there is. Um, so I'm just going to have you sign here, giving us permission to pull that stuff. Right, that's what I'm saying. It was so wet that it, it didn't take and then much. Print. So I need your signature and then I need you to print and date today's date. Telling me they said that I I beat them to death. Yeah. Is that what they saying? Mm -hmm. That's very inaccurate. There is now no possible doubt about McLean being the prime suspect. In no uncertain terms, police have just told him they believe he is responsible for Dakota's death. A parent who truly cared for their child would be upset by this idea and would likely get angry. 
but McLean doesn't even look up from his paper, and all he says is, that's very inaccurate. When you spank him, what do you spank him with? My hand. Your hand? You don't use anything else? Mm -hmm. Just your hand? Yep. And that, and that's uh, rarely that because he was thinking so damn bad that if I touch him, then I'm gonna smell for days. Mm -hmm. Nobody in the house wanted to touch him. I mean, Jane was left there with him majority of the time. Mandy was left there with him other times while I'm at work, and it'd be the same way. He just had bruises, and I ain't never asked because I know they didn't beat him. They at the same time, I know what he do. Yeah. I thought he took a shower every day. Yeah. So if he walks around naked, how's he stink so bad? You said how? Yeah. You'd be surprised. It's just, it's just stuck on him when you do it so long. I mean, so long, miss. I mean, I mean, I'll just be sitting on the couch and get the biggest breeze of his urine and his feces, and that's it. I mean, I could take him right out the shower and smell him and it still be very, very, very strong. Unbearable. So, I mean, obviously he drove you crazy. Mm, I don't I want, I want to say that. Well, I mean, I mean I, he I was irritated on you. He, he I mean, made you angry. He irrit I mean, you sit here and talk about how he stung. Yeah, I ain't slept in days. I ain't slept in days, but I wouldn't say that. Uh, yeah, at times he did drive me crazy. At times I did not know what I would do, but I will always try to stay level-headed and just see through it another day. But I'm sure there's times that you didn't. And we know you didn't. I mean, in all honesty, we, we have witnesses, obviously, that were there when you were doing this stuff to him. Yeah, you know, all these marks that are not self-created. Yeah. Half of them are not. Some of them, like I said, I, I spank them at times. What did you spank them with? Uh, a spatula. A spatula? Yeah. It was flat. Yeah. What is this here? That's a rash. That's from his nastiness. Just a rash. Laying in his piss every day, ate his back up. No, that's mm -hmm. not. That, I don't know what that is. I, I thought it was a rash. I've been seeing it for weeks. I actually thought it was a rash. Maybe you took him to the doctor, you would know. What, what could I have done to cause that? What causes Dragged that? Him. Dragged him where? Down the steps. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Ma no, no, ma'am. We don't have any carpet. I did not drag him. I mean that. We don't have no carpet. I didn't drag the boy. You didn't see the tear in his butt today, in his anal area? The tear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the tear. I've seen it swole, swollen, but well, I, I didn't. Plain as day cut. Yep. A tear, actually. It's possible. Did you have to hold him down in the bathtub? Was he fighting you to get out of the bathtub? Mm-mm. No. Nope. No, ma'am. Not at all. So as nasty as he Jane is. Jane spanked him you before. Take him. Amanda spanked him before. I mean, the same, we all use the same thing, the spatula. It ain't never been nothing heavy. I just pop him on the butt a couple times, whap, 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 uh, get right. I mean, because he obviously just keeps trying to hurt himself. Get right before what? He started saying get no, right No, no, see, look, see, that's the mind games. It's not before what, it's be get right before you hurt yourself. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, before you endanger yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, stop while you're ahead. I used to always tell them that. Stop while you're ahead. Just stop. How come I asked you like two or three times what you spanked him with and you told me your hand and then... Yeah, usually it would be my hand, but I have used a special. I want to be honest as possible. I really do. McLean looks away when saying he wants to be as honest as possible, which indicates the opposite. The detective is being much more confrontational now, calling him on lies, challenging his explanations with evidence, and even offering her own explanations to see if he'll change his story. Yeah. Yeah, like that drag mark, or that you call it. Mm-hmm. That's what it looks like to me. Don't know what that is. I'm telling you, never seen it. Besides the fact 
I, when I did see it, I just thought it was a rash. So all these marks are probably spatula marks? Is that what you're telling me? I mean, yes. that's sensitive. Yes. Yeah. It is. Okay. Is that what killed him? Mm, I would say the spatula marks did not. Um, but possibly throwing him around or stepping on him or putting your knee on his chest or... And, I, and it was only, yeah, I did this morning, but it was only to keep him from uh, hurting himself. Like, he didn't want to come off the, the uh, thing that was in his butt. Like, he wanted to fight for it. I'm like, I ripped it out, and he was still, you know what I mean, aggressive. I'm like, you need to lay down, settle down. He didn't want to lay down. I just tried to get him to calm down for a second. So what did you do to make him calm down? I just laid him down flat and just you know, put my knee on his back. I didn't put a lot of pressure on it. I just held it to where he could, you know what I mean? Make him put his hands behind his back? Yeah, because just anything to get him to stop. Because I couldn't watch it again. Him eat his shit again. So he's naked. You pulled this thing out of his butt, which probably hurt. I mean, I'm guessing it hurt him. Uh, it must have. I didn't know at the time. I mean, at all. I don't do the butt thing. I don't know nothing about it. What hurt was my pride and my feelings and the fact that he's up there doing it. He know how embarrassing that is. I'm like, what are you doing? Give me that. Mm. And that's when it squirted out, miss. And that's when I addressed it right away. As McLean now admits to frequently spanking Dakota with a spatula and to having him on the floor with his knee in his back, he explains how embarrassed he was by his son's behavior and how angry that made him. He's describing these horrible, abusive events that ultimately led to Dakota's death, and all he can think about is himself. So I'm sure you were embarrassed and pissed. Nah. Mm -mm. Nobody was up. Nobody was there. Nobody was around that I knew of. You know? But usually, that's what I'm saying. Usually it can be, but nah, it wasn't at the time. So you pulled out of his butt and. He's still fighting you a little bit. You roll him over and you put your knee on his back, have him put his hands behind his back. Yup, and I probably spanked him with a spatula a couple of times, yes, man. This morning, too? Yes, man. Yup, right when he uh, put up the fight for the uh, stick being in his ass, I did. Yeah, okay. after I checked on his wound, though, because it was my way of telling him, like, don't do that again. Do not. So you put him in the bathtub and you check his butt, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you get him out and you whoop him? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Spatula. Yep, because I didn't want to whoop him right away, not knowing what was going on with his butthole. You know what I mean? And then you, so then you have to go back upstairs? Yep. Did you put hot sauce on him today? No. Mm -mm. So he goes back upstairs and then at some point you had thrown his bed into another room, or was that later? I mean, I'm just trying to be accurate on this. Yeah, that, that was, uh, that was, I'm trying to see what, X again? You pull the stick out of his butt, you take him downstairs, you give him a bath, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay, yep. And then you, you nah, the bed, hit him nah, with the, the spatula. No, nah, the bed was still there. Okay, at that point it was still there. Yep. So, and then he, so you, after you hit him with the spatula, what, is, what, what do you do then? That was it. I walked off. Did he go upstairs by himself or what? No, I, he, I did it when he was laying down in the bed. You know what I mean? So he gets out of the bath and then goes back up there naked. Yup, back to bed. Yes, ma'am. So he goes up there naked. He didn't eat or anything like that. And then you go we up there. We fed him already. He didn't want to eat his food. Okay. So you go back up there with the spatula and whoop him. Yes, ma'am. And then what do you do? That's it. I go back downstairs and I sit down. And I just watch him to see if he's going to do anything else that can cause more harm than a spanking. And that's what I wait for. And I just sat there and, and I watched him. And that was it. He didn't do anything. He after, after there? That. Yes, ma'am. Mm hmm And then at some point he calls you up there again? Yes, ma'am. Yup. And that's when I went to go check on him. And that's when, I, that's when he... So then what started not looking good. He didn't look good? Mm -mm. So what was what did he look like then? He was laying on his bed? Mm hmm What did he look like? And he pushed himself up. He was just like that. He just a little alert, a little loopy. You know what I mean? It was a little bit of both. And 
I decided to uh, get them downstairs, try to wash that throw up out of them, and uh, that's when he started to go away. Okay. And you tied the water in from when he went down there earlier? Mm -hmm. And he was in the water going like this, and you know what I mean, shaking and jumping, but I didn't, uh, I didn't have to hold him down or dunk him in the water. Yeah, so uh, he was laying on his side doing that, something he just putting on the show again, you know what I mean? He puts on a show like he's having a seizure? Oh, uh, yeah, 24 7. Like this. Are you sure he's putting on a show? I mean, he yes, hasn't been to the hospital. Yes, ma'am, it was not a seizure because, look, I can tell him, like, stop it right now. Here's the sucker many times, and he'd be like, okay, dad. <laughs> Thanks for my sucker. You know, it was it was just a show. Okay, so then he goes, you put him in the bathtub, and that's not working or whatever. So you get him out and put him on the floor. Yeah. And then you go and get clothes for him. No, I'm already on the phone with uh with nine one one because he seemed like he's in and out of it. So uh, yeah, I'm grabbing his clothes, getting him dressed. And in the meantime, Amanda's freaking out and saying, I got to get out of here. You take care of this. I'm going to the store. Nah, I can't recall her saying that to me. I don't even, like I said, I've been up for three days. I don't even know if she was there or not. I cannot recall her saying. Pretty sure you would remember if somebody freaked out because some a kid's not responding. Nah. Oh, I, that's something that even a little bit of missing sleep probably wouldn't really make Man, it's been three days since I've been asleep, ma'am, I'm telling you. And uh, I, I can't tell you at this point. I cannot. You want the accurate answers. And that's yeah, what I'm trying to give you. I don't want to give you no, nothing I don't know nothing about. You know what I mean? I have a question, though. What's that? What is that happened to my child body? What happened to it? Yeah. I mean, what are they going to do with it? Well, it's going to go to the coroner's office. And they're going to cremate him? Mm -hmm. Or who has the, I have sole custody. So do I say to say so? I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works I, I don't want him to donate his organs or anything like that. They probably already took them by now, huh? No, nah, I don't. I don't think so. Why would you want his organs donated? I just don't believe in that. The black market where no one can shop on it but the right people. I just don't believe in it. He's going to have an autopsy done. Yeah, so we can see what's going on. Yeah, to see what caused it, all right? All the injuries are inside. See if it was the because he was drowned or because he was hit up against the wall. Yeah, when I was pumping him, it did sound like he had water in him. You know what I mean? McLean asks what will be done with Dakota's body, saying he doesn't want his organs to be donated because he's worried they'll end up on the black market. Besides this being insane, he's likely asking because he knows Dakota drowned and wants to know if they're going to be looking at his lungs. When police say they are, he reminds them about the water he had Dakota drink and claims that he remembers hearing the water in Dakota's body while he was trying to resuscitate him. Something he hasn't mentioned until now. And he woke up, Lupus. So I'm thinking, last night when I gave him all that water to drink, to get that poop out of his stomach, he could have had it in his lungs then and I didn't know it. Or maybe he had a bunch of water in his I did Something give him a whole like bunch him. of, yes ma'am, I gave him a whole bunch of water because I, he drowned from it? I'm thinking so, because, mm -hmm. because look, I was trying to um, get the poop out of his stomach. I mean that. I swear to God, that I do believe that's what happened. Because look, when I'm humping my son's chest, I can feel the water. I can hear the water. You hear me? And his body. And uh, on the phone, I didn't know. Yeah, he drank uh, plenty of it. Mm -hmm. But at the time, like I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't thinking that he could have died from it. You know what I mean? I would only did it to help him. Yeah. Because I he looked bad. His stomach was out the hair. I'm like, what in the hell did you been doing or what you been eating? Ain't nothing that good in this world to take you from this to that. And drink the water for me, please. He did. And uh, 
Was it defined about drinking the water? So was he defined? Uh, not really. He was just slamming them down. Okay. And, uh, yup, he just slamming them down, slamming them down, slamming them down. And he did start to throw up. <laughs> so he threw up yesterday? Last night, but not much. Mm -hmm. This is when I'm uh, giving him the water right. to get him to throw up. Okay. He threw up a little bit. And I've seen it was no poop in it. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, I try to get him to do it again. And, uh, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't throw up. Okay. What, well, what did his day look like yesterday? What did you guys do yesterday? Start with yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? Mm -hmm. uh, the same. I mean, I just fed him. Uh, you fed him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had breakfast. I'm going to spend some time with him. You know, I try to talk to him about his problems and, and, uh, being a better kid and how he can change and he's telling me he loved me so much and you know what I mean and that he he's gonna try to do better and you know and we spent a couple hours together and uh that was it he had lunch he had dinner uh I think did he lay down the whole day I want to say I want to say he probably did but uh that was pretty much it I mean sometimes you can't get on and do nothing here just later when did the um, steadiness start where he's walking into walls or stumbling around or whatever you said? See, that's the thing. I damn near fell asleep. And uh, this shit started about two days ago is when he started this. Not a matter of fact, you see. Yeah, I say about two days ago we started going there. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, uh, thought he was playing around. And, uh, I mean, he didn't look sick. He just, just, just like, tell me about two days ago what that day looked like. Uh, same thing. We usually have the, the norm. Big chit chats and counseling sessions, you want to call it, and, and that's it. So you were home with him for the past three days? I want to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he drank so much water. I'm pretty sure of it. Mm -hmm. Well, if he drinks that much water and then he gets in trouble when he pees or poops, no, it's probably not a good thing. I understand that's kind of double jeopardy, mm -hmm. but I never did this before. I never had him like drink all this water, drink all this water, drink all this water until I seen his belly looking like that. I was concerned. Like, uh, maybe you ate too much shit or maybe you're starting to show. And he, uh, yeah, and I just wanted him to throw up. I just wanted to know that it wasn't nothing wrong inside of him at the time, you know what I mean? And uh, that's what he did. He threw up one time and that was it. Did you ever pour salt in his wound? Uh uh. No, just hot sauce? Yeah. Never salt? No. Okay. I'll pour salt on the floor upstairs sometimes just to try to get that piss to soak up out the cracks and stuff like that. But other than that, no, nah, it wasn't no punishment with the salt or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I ain't put no salt in his water. I ain't did nothing like that. McLean says he never put salt in Dakota's wounds. He only put salt on the floor to soak up the mess. This is him trying to get in front of the results of the autopsy, which will clearly show salt in Dakota's wounds. Like I said, uh, it really shocked me today. I mean, I'm still shocked. This is going to be the rest. I'm going to be in prison for the rest of my life because of this right here. That's my child. Why are you going to be in prison? I mean, I'm the man, I'm, I'm the only parent, I'm responsible. You know what I mean? And it's just bad. Like I said, I probably did give him too much water, but I never had intentions on uh, making it cause that. I mean, I was getting fed up as a parent, yeah, but I was not trying to kill my child or hurt my child, molest my child, do anything wrong to my child, but get him to use the bathroom and the, and the toilet like a normal, 11 year old child he just didn't want to do it he would actually do both go piss in the toilet and save the big play for 
upstairs or for uh, when we're watching TV or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask y'all a question? Have y'all dealt with this before or something similar? What do you mean? Uh, I don't. I just need some help right now. Like my child is dead. You hear me? Mm -hmm. And and they looking at me like I'm. You know what I mean? That's not good. No, it's not. What? Uh, why did you hide the the stool leg? No, I just took it away from him. I didn't really hide it. Where'd you put it? I remember putting it. Uh, I don't know where I put it at. To be honest, I probably stuck it behind the dresser, just out of sight, real quick. Behind the dresser? Yeah, somewhere out of sight. Out of sight of who? Me and him. Why out of your sight? Because it reminded me of where I pulled it out from. That's pretty gross. I didn't want to smell it. I didn't want the baby to get a hold of it. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, I mean, it was definitely out of his sight because he was locked upstairs and not allowed to come out. So that wasn't an issue. It never that he was not allowed to come out. He just didn't want to come out respectful. You can't come out and, and shit on yourself right beside somebody and not that you don't want. I mean, that you can't. So he wasn't allowed because he pooped his hands. Nah, it ain't that he wasn't allowed. Sometimes we put a diaper on him and we kicked it. You know what I mean? He actually had diapers. And adult diapers and all that. I mean, uh, I'm just trying to teach him a lesson, but not in the physical aspect. You taught him a lesson. Right. It took his life. And I am very sorry. I mean that. It, it kills me. You hear me? To know that water did that, or and then my uh, attitude, the way I've been spanking him, I ain't gonna lie, I did get out of control at times, but uh, not that often. And uh, I, I thought he would snap back from it. You know what I mean? From his ass whooping, I didn't know that water was gonna do that. I'm believing that's that's when he started acting funny, right? He had too much. But, um, I think it's probably the ass whooping, but... You think so? Yeah. It killed him? Yeah. I mixed a lot of things that were going on. The stress? Mm -hmm. I got a question, though. Is, if, uh... I don't know, man. I'm afraid for my life. Yeah. I'm hurt that my child is gone. It's unbelievable. Like, I, I said, I believe right now he's dead, gone, not coming back. You're afraid for your life? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Your child said, and you're afraid for your life. I'll be spending the rest of my life in prison. I'm 30 years old. What I'm going to do for the rest of my life, but all because I tried to raise my child the right way and he became defiant and we ran into a situation. You know what I mean? I, I, and people knew what he was doing. You know, but at the same time, it wasn't for them to do anything about it. It was for me to do something. I feel like uh, I should have really just tried harder on getting them some better counseling. But we in Ohio at that too. That's automatic death penalty, ain't it? It is, ain't it? What are you thinking is death penalty? They just changed the law. The look into that, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. All right, anything else? Yeah. Uh, the, is the girls going to be all right? I mean, I can, I really shouldn't be worried about that at this point, but I just don't want them to get in enough type of trouble. You know, they tried to help me so much with uh, taking care of them and, you know, making sure things didn't get out of hand and all that. I can't talk for the girls yet. I mean, I don't think any decisions have been made, so... But I'm just begging y'all, please, 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 
please take into consideration. I did not get my child out of the foster care. I fought four years for him just to turn around and do him like this. You hear me? Mm -hmm. I, I say I moved from North Carolina to Wisconsin. That's over 1,800 miles away just to make sure that, you know what I mean, I could be a part of my son's life. I never, ever, ever had intentions on doing this or seeing it going so far. I really just thought he, his behind would be all right the next day and, and you know, he'll continue with his behaviors. Uh, mm. I did grow a little angry when I was thinking this, but with that special. I'm getting life in prison, you know? Let's see how it goes, man. Strong possibility. It's possible. Please, y'all, please don't do it to me. Just hang on real quick, okay? I'm only 30, please. McLean gives one last half-hearted attempt at sympathy, telling them he's only 30 as they exit the room. All right, man, go stand up, put your hands around your back. We're gonna take you to the valley, put your church out, all right? Can you tell me why I'm being charged with? Right now, murder and child endangering. Murder? Yes. What does the, what does murder mean? Like, I, Murder I, means you killed your child. I so planned it. What's that? That means I planned it or something? No, I didn't say you planned it. What I'm saying is that you murdered your son. Anybody else being charged? Mm -hmm. I haven't decided yet. It's in my bed. It's in the inside. Murder. 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 Do you, you hold my shoes? Huh? I'm sorry. Do you hold my shoes on? Yeah, they're in the other room. We'll get them. Police come in and cuff McLean, telling him he's being charged with murder and child endangerment. McLean begins to protest, but the officer isn't having any of it. He's then led out of the room and taken to jail. Al Mutahan McLean ultimately pled guilty to the death of 10-year-old Dakota Collins in the face of overwhelming evidence. Dakota's autopsy showed long-term, significant physical and sexual abuse. Three days after Dakota's death, McLean's house was fully processed, with special care given to the windowless, furnitureless attic room that Dakota spent most of his life locked in. Items like the spatula and table leg he used to discipline his children were obtained as well. He was sentenced to 51 years to life, the maximum possible sentence. The judge told him, what you did was pure evil. You deserve no mercy from this court. His girlfriend, Amanda Hines, was sentenced to 22 years in prison for allowing the abuse to occur for so long. And Hines' sister, Jennifer Ebert, was sentenced to eight years. During and following the case, there was much public outcry about the branch of children's services that handled Dakota's case, given that despite McLean's criminal record and many calls, reports, and 17 tips from teachers in the years leading up to Dakota's death, he was still left in the care of McLean. In fact, at the time of his death, there wasn't even an open case for Dakota. As a result, a new bill in honor of Dakota has since been passed by Ohio's House of Representatives, holding children and family services legally accountable for collaborating with police in child abuse cases. Thank you for watching my first video. I hope it was informative. This is a case that I've known about for a while, and when I decided to start this channel, I wanted to cover an interrogation that hasn't already been examined multiple times over. If you enjoyed this breakdown, uh, there's actually a good amount of other media available for this case, from the interviews of Hines and Ebert, to prison calls between McLean and Hines after their arrests, that I'd be more than happy to cover if there's any interest. Uh, until then, Thanks for watching, have a good one.